All right, so we've been adding these items to our store. I'm on the dashboard. We've added some variations and such. And in our case, because of our particular theme, if I hover over Bakery Store, I get these items. Some people might think, well, the options here that I can click on are your account, transaction results, and checkout. Some people might not think, oh, Bakery Store is also clickable. Obviously, in our particular store, Bakery Store is where the products are at. It might not be obvious to everyone. As we work on our site, we know all the nuances of it, we know how it works. But there's a theory that every time someone visits a website, they have to learn something new. How does that website work? And there are conventions that are commonly used, like it's very common for the logo or the name of the site to be a, a link back home. So did you try to ever click on the name of the site that takes you back home? We have also the home button, which takes us home. That's obvious. But that's the thing, that some people are savvy or have used websites enough that they know or have the inkling that they can click on the name and it goes home. And some people would have never thought about that. If I don't see a home button, there's no way to get home. So a little redundancy on a website is okay because it helps everyone use your website. So here under Bakery Store, we can further edit our menu to make it uh, to make it more obvious, and then we will change it so that it's more uh, powerful. The way that we'll do this is we will we will go back to edit the menu and add a new item called shop. And yes, shop will be to some degree the same thing as bakery store, but then it'll be further organized into categories of products. Right now, all of my products are thrown on this one screen here, so every single thing is just a long line of products. Page 1, page 2, page 40. It's all one long line. I have to go next, 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 previous. I want so that when I go to the menu, I will have buy cookies or buy cupcakes or by donuts. I want to go to the individual categories and we can do that with WordPress pretty easily. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go to appearance and then menus. Here's what our current menu is. We've got home, contact, all of that stuff. I want to add a new little section and then in that section, all the categories of things that I'm selling. We can do this many different ways, and here's one way. Uh, I'm going to say right away that, um, again, we have all of these things that we could add. If you don't have all the same things that I have, most likely your screen options are different. Remember, screen options at the top. Oftentimes I see that when someone sets up WordPress, they don't have here categories um, or other things, well, check your screen options. Most likely there will be screen options that are not active because WordPress has so much going on it doesn't activate everything. I think ours are okay because I see what I want to see which is pages, categories, and so forth. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna add a brand new clickable menu item to my menu. And here's the trick that I will do. Under custom links, link text, I'll, I'll write shop categories. This can be either the, the verb or the noun. The shop categories noun or the verb shop in these categories. So I've got, I'm going to have a brand new menu item. 
but it's not going to go anywhere. When you click on it, nothing will happen. And the way we do that, under the URL, the address, is we put the pound sign, Shift 3. That's uh, a little bit of HTML code that makes it behave like a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. I want the, the little hand to appear when you try to put your mouse on it. If they click, nothing happens. But I want it to be clickable so that the drop-down menu is available on the next step. So this is a new custom link. The text is shop categories. The URL is the pound sign, shift 3, add to menu. We can decide where we want to put it. Bakery store, blog, shop categories. I'll just leave it at the end here for the moment. And the way this will work is when someone clicks or hovers over shop categories, it'll drop down and show cookies, cakes, etc. And if they click on cookies, only the cookies will appear. Product categories. Again, if you don't see product categories, it may be hidden under screen options at the top right. But I, I want all of these cookies, cakes, pies, donuts. Add them to the menu. And then here I'll have to rearrange them. Cookies are inside of shop categories, so are cakes, pies. And remember when you're dragging these over, be careful because it can easily make a sub menu item of a sub-menu item. You can do that if you want. Most likely you don't. So how far do these go? Look at that, I've got sub-menus of sub-menus of sub-menus, if you really, really want. Shop categories will show cookies, cakes, pies, and donuts. Save your menu. Arrange those however you want. Save that menu and then go back to visit site. So we've got up on the menu, home, contact us, blog, bakery store, shop categories. Notice I put my mouse on shop categories and it looks like I can click. And someone might click, nothing happens, that's fine, that's what the pound sign is for. Some people might not ever think about clicking that, that's fine also. It's not set up for clickability. What is set up, it might be more obvious, is then it's got these drop downs of cakes cookies, pies, and donuts. And if I kick, click on cakes, all cakes show up. We've only got one so far, birthday cake. We have more than one cookie. If you go to cookies, it should show chocolate chip and giant cookie and snickerdoodle. We've got three of them, actually. I forgot to say when we were making the snickerdoodle cookie to put the category of cookie, but I went back and added it, and you should be able to figure that out. But here, then, only the cookie products show up if a person selects cookies. Pies. We had added a pies graphic to the category, so it shows up here. And then the pecan pie. And donuts. We've only got one donuts.
So menu items can be used to add more complexity to the site. And notice we can add different things to the menu items. In this case, I added categories, product categories. Uh, I forgot to mention, I'll go back to the menus. I forgot to mention that, be careful because we have categories and product categories. The default is that we have categories. We got product categories when we added the uh, when we added the the WP Commerce plugin. Categories are the categories of blog posts. So if we were writing articles, if we were blogging, and we were using categories, that's what that's what be included. Product categories, obviously, then are products. Notice we can also do this under variations. We can create some sort of menu item and then add variations. Every single kind of variation or just one or two. The point of this would be that if I have, let's say, what if I make a brand new menu item and call it sales? I'm trying to get rid of my inventory of sugar-free cookies. No one's buying them. So I make a, a new custom link call it sale and I can add the variations sugar-free so whatever has been uh, categorized as a variation of sugar-free will show up on that menu we have to be careful of course because if we use sugar-free many times we used it on cookies and cakes then cookies and cakes will appear here if I'm only trying to sell my inventory of sugar-free cookies uh, this won't work So any questions then on menus and their use, or their usefulness? We've been working on this site for a while, and the design of it, maybe we're getting tired of it. Let's go over to Appearance Themes. A while ago, I had downloaded a thing called Satu. It's still hanging around there. So let's activate it and see what we get. Go to Appearance Themes and then hover over Satu and click Activate. Visit Site. I see my menu at the top, kind of a cool animation. I hover over. Home, contact, blog, blog, bakery, shop. Something says home, really large. Text. I no longer have a sidebar, it's down on the footer. Text at the bottom. We'll look at contact us. So I'm missing all my cool um, sidebar stuff. It went back to the defaults, categories, articles, and such. Let's see how does my bakery store look like. Notice I rearranged the order of things a bit. Uh, no, never mind. It's the same order, it looks like. I can go to bakery store and then a big old products page that needs to be edited. This is going to depend on the theme. Maybe the theme itself has some cool design that we can tap into. We'll see in a moment. Next page, previous page, products. I 
I can click on a product and I see the um, what's it called the featured image it's nice and big at the top there So what I'm getting at is we can easily switch between themes but we still probably have to massage it a little bit, fine-tune the results. So let's explore that a little bit. Um, let's go back to the dashboard, find my Satu theme. And what we have, what we could do is we could do things manually to some degree, or we can do things guided. Manually means I would go to Appearance, and I would go in and edit the widgets, and the menus, and the background, all of that. That would be manual. I can go in and, and go to each individual section and make changes. Guided is right here under Customize. Let's try this. Hover, hover over Appearance and select Customize. This will show you like a live version of your site and some things that can be changed on the left. The theme, for example. Site identity, here's a few things that we can change. Title and tagline and fav icon. <coughs> Colors, that one's not too interesting, but there's a spot there to change. A little bit of background colors. Notice where it changes. None of these changes take effect until you click Save and Publish. I haven't done that yet. Header image. Um, this is saying if you have an image of 1280 by 360. This depends on the theme. This particular theme takes it on this size. Other themes will be different. So always check what yours says. But uh, I think I have a, an image or two to, to work with. Uh, I'm going to borrow um, a koala, I guess. It says what size. Skip cropping, crop image. see the picture myself. Might be too small so it doesn't quite show it up very well. Background image, another picture to add. If there's a description it'll tell you where it appears but I guess I'm seeing it behind my text. Looks a little weird. How can I set it up. Again, you can customize that. Menus have already been set up. Widgets, okay, so footer sidebar. I wouldn't call it a sidebar if it's at the foot, but it's down there and those are those items that I don't want down on the footer. So I can change those. I don't want categories, so I'll remove that. static front page that was set previously. So if I like any of these changes, I can then click Save Publish. I can further also test what does my site look like on different devices. More and more people are using mobile devices instead of a desktop computer. So it would be nice to see what does your site look like. Is it responsive? Does it look good when it's on a small device?
if you made any changes you can save and publish if you don't want the changes click the X depending on your theme you may also have some other menu item besides customize you may have a separate menu item where you have more customization of your theme I don't think I see that on on this particular theme sometimes they hide it in a sub menu item usually they're pretty obvious I might say theme options maybe the name of the theme let's say the theme is called unicase I might say unicase options so depending on your theme hopefully you have a menu item where you can further edit as a guided customization There's no one-size-fits-all. I've dealt with lots of themes, and some are consistent, many are not. But what is consistent is that they often come, if they come from a particular design studio, then they're often consistent. Um, so you usually have to have a discovery phase. You buy a theme, and then you have to play with it. You have to discover, what are its features? Oh, I see a menu item here. Let me click on it. What does it do? I see a bunch of options, let me click, let me change. That's why, again, it's valuable to use something like WAMP instead of your real life site where you're working with a theme and then you're, you're messing with it and it doesn't, you don't know how it works yet and people are seeing your changes live. When you get it up on the internet for real, people can see your changes live. So working on WAMP is a better way to go. And later on, it, we'll wrap up the class at the end of the day talking about moving the site over to a real server. We're not quite there yet. We still have a little bit more to talk about regarding customization. So we've got the guided one. Any questions on that? It's going to depend on your particular theme. If your particular theme doesn't have a spot, if it doesn't have some sort of friendly button for you to click on, you can't do it. Like, I would like to change down here proudly powered by WordPress theme Satu by Satre. I would like to change that. I want it to say something else. But there's no button anywhere, no menu item that I can click on to let me do that. So now we have to talk about advanced editing. Let's go to Appearance. Let's go to Editor. We've touched on this a couple of times before, I think. And now we'll look at it a little more deeply. Appearance, editor. This is pulling back the curtain of, uh, of our site. This is all of the code that makes up our site. Actually, this is one piece of all of our code because we are currently editing the style.css file. And this site is made out of 404 template file, archive file, comment, theme header, theme footer. These are all of the pieces that make up a site. That's why when I said earlier in the course, there's those three levels of WordPress. Buying a theme or getting one for free and using it as is with minimal allowed customization. That's level one. It's the most affordable level free theme, paid theme, and work with the customizer here. Next level, free theme or paid theme, and then get into the editor where you can change anything that is not allowed in the customizer. Everything's allowed here. Level three, build your own site from scratch. You're going to need to learn a lot of code, CSS code, PHP code, HTML code, JavaScript code, four huge programming languages if you're going to build a site from scratch. That's why that's the most expensive level of WordPress if you hire someone. If you want a site that doesn't look like anyone else's site, you should be prepared to pay 
several thousand dollars, easily ten thousand dollars. You might say ten thousand dollars for a website? Yes, for a very good website, that's affordable. For us, maybe that we see these commercials about build your own website for two hundred fifty dollars. It sounds outlandish, ten thousand dollars. But for a big company that's doing a lot of business and such, ten thousand dollars is an affordable website. It's all relative. For most clients, if they come to my company, we recommend them level two. Don't have us build you a, a complete site from scratch. It's not worth it. It's expensive. It's time consuming. You need a good website, but you also need extra things. We'll touch on a few of them, such as social media, such as SEO, search engine optimization. So don't spend all your money on just getting a perfectly looking website that no one else has and then neglect the marketing. Because unfortunately, if you build it, they will not come. If you build it and advertise it, they will come. And so let's touch a little bit on level two. We're going to edit some of this code. And probably a lot of us here are not that comfortable with this, and that's okay. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But I'm showing you that if you have some skills in some of these programming languages, you will be able to do much more than what is allowed. This particular theme also, I just noticed it says here, please do not edit this file if you want to customize the style. You can create a child theme. And it's got a link to the helpful help file about making child themes. We're not going to get into child themes. They're honestly pretty complex. But oftentimes nowadays, when you buy a theme, it comes with a child theme. The point of the child theme is that you, you make the code edits on the child theme, and when you do updates to the parent theme, your changes do not disappear. If you were to make changes directly to the parent theme, and you update the parent theme, your edits disappear because you get the latest version of the code. So child themes are the way to go. If you want to make child themes from scratch, they're a little difficult. Luckily, I've been seeing more and more theme, paid themes, especially give you the parent theme and the child theme. And what that will look like is that once I'm in the themes screen, it'll say Satu, and it'll say Satu Child. You want to activate Satu Child. That'll take all of the abilities and features of Satu Parent, but when we go in and do the code editor here, our edits will be protected. On the right side, we see that the site is made up of ver various files. We've got a 404 error page. Let me see if I can bring that up. Let's say I want to visit a site, a page on our site that doesn't exist. We have right here. Oops, that page is, can't be found. That's the 404 error page. If I don't want it to say that, if I want it to say, we're sorry, um, what you're looking for is not here. If I want to edit that, there's no button anywhere in the customizer here that will let me do that. But wait a minute, if I go to the 404 template file, it looks like nothing was found at this location. Maybe try one in the searches. So what appeared on the screen is editable right here, isn't it? And it seems to be a little more complex than that because I don't see the words oops in the actual code here. I did a quick search. What I do see is it looks like nothing was found. I can see that right there. It might be over on the theme functions. This is another complex, usually complex file. Anyway, here's an edit that we're going to make. Let's see if we can make it. I haven't tried it yet here um, with this theme. But I want to see if I can edit the text down here. The thing about WordPress is because the, the nature of the software, we can make any changes we want at all. Any change because this kind of software is open source. In this particular case, we can make these changes. Whereas other things, we wouldn't be able to make the changes. So the, the text down here is most likely part of the footer file of the site. Notice here. If you look, we'll see theme header, theme footer. Most likely that text is in there. We'll see how it is. Let's try to click on theme footer. You see a lot of code here. Not 
not that much, but if you're not familiar with this, it's a lot of code. A little hard to, to, to work with. If you deal with any coding on a regular basis, a real code editor with color coding and such is much better than plain black and white text. Um, because it's easy to lose track of what code you're working with. This is a quick example here. If I was working with a real code editor like this, notice it would highlight it in different colors, so it can help me understand what I'm looking at. This is much better than the built-in WordPress code editor here, and I think really this is one of the forgotten areas of WordPress. They keep updating WordPress and making it better, but this has been here like for years and years and years without much improvement. There's no undo button, there's no code highlighting, there's no line numbers. On a real code editor like this, I have line numbers that I can easily jump to line 20 and make a change. Notice how these colors show up like this to show you, well, this particular code is this, means this, means that, this green color means this, etc. Here it's plain. It's hard to work with. This code editor that I'm showing is one that I like to use. It's called Notepad++. It's for free. It's on Windows. On the Mac, uh, there's, a, there's a code editor called Brackets. Um, Brackets is also on Windows. But if you're going to do any hardcore or complex coding, this is going to be much better than this. Just to show you kind of like the workflow of how I would do this, let's do this. I'm in the theme footer file. You want to right click anywhere in the code and select and click select all. And then right click the code and copy. Go to your Start menu and search Notepad++. Not Notepad, that's a plain text editor that is not very useful for what we need. Notepad++. It gives us this, this editor on the top left corner. There's a little icon with a plus symbol on it for new. I'm going to click that and then right click paste. It brings me all my code. Well, it's still black and white. It's still not as useful as this code here. That's because Notepad doesn't know what language this code is until really I tell it. So I pasted the code into Notepad++. Then I go to the language menu. We got this out of the footer.php file. Language. P. PHP. And now it understands. Oh, this is PHP. Color codes the, the different codes. It's got these little lines that show you this code connects with this code. If you click on this code that says footer, it connects with the top part of footer. This is completely optional, but this is going to be a little easier for us than working with this. This doesn't even have word wrap, or it's a, I mean, it has word wrap, it, it doesn't even have, you know, a good amount of space. It, it, it made the line cut off. Here, in Notepad, the line is full, full length. So the point of this is if I look on the code, if I look on line 11, 
it would be hard to tell you here. There's no line numbers. But if you're here in Notepad and you look at line 11, there's a lot of gibberish. But then I see proudly powered by Satu WordPress. Theme by Satu Satu Satria. I'm if I don't know any of this code, that's fine because I know what this regular English text means. Probably powered by WordPress and a web address. Theme by and then a web address. So what we could do, we have different options. I could completely remove all of this. The easiest way would be to select lines 11 and 12, 11 through, 11 through 13. And just delete. Then it would no longer say those items. So um, don't do this yet, but let me show you. If I deleted those lines, then I would need to copy the code from Notepad and paste it back into back into WordPress. Update file. Now my footer doesn't say proudly powered anymore. So you see the workflow is that I have this code, I edit the code, I update my file in WordPress, and then it changes on my site. I was saying we had two options. I could completely remove it. That's one option. Or I could edit it. Both could be tricky, depending on the complexity of the code. But I showed one where I simply deleted it all, and that worked OK. But if I wanted, what if I wanted it to say something else? I could, do you see, I could go in and say, instead of proudly powered by WordPress, I could go in and say proudly powered by Victor. It'll say Victor on screen. I'd have to change this web address here because that's going to go back to WordPress.com, so I'd have to change that. And then it says theme by Satu. Well, maybe I don't want to show that at all, so I could delete line 13. Before we go further, all of these edits, I'm making these changes. And in Notepad++, I do have undo and redo at least. I don't have that. I don't have that here in the WordPress editor at all. It's make changes, save changes, that's it. I can't undo. Well, actually, if I do type something and then hit on my keyboard control Z, that is undo. There's no indicator of that, but if you know control Z on the keyboard, it is an undo. But the problem is that if I then do update and then try to undo, I can't do it anymore. So again, this is very limited. On the one hand, it's very limited because it, it's not a good editor. But on the other hand, it's very powerful because you can edit anything on your whole site. If there's no pretty button for it, it's in here somewhere in the code. And so if I copied my code over to someplace else like Notepad to make changes here where it's nicer, undo, redo, color coding and such, that's better. But I still have to think about, well, what if I made these changes here and I move the code back and I, later I decide, well, actually, I didn't want to lose those lines of code. If I don't have my undo anymore, I lost my code. So. What's useful about something like Notepad is that I can create more files. And here I've got a copy of my code in one tab and a copy of my code in another tab. And these are separate. I can edit this tab here as much as I want, and it won't interfere with the other tab. So I can make changes to this one, make mistakes, and I have another copy of it here. 
notepad is also cool because if I close it, whoops, I never saved it. No, no problem. Notepad remembers. Anywhere else, if I didn't save it, it would have been gone. But notepad stores all of this basic text pretty easily. This has saved me. This is uh, me with 15 years' experience. This has saved me a few times as well. Working on my code, uh, I close the file. I go off to do other things. Whoops! The original code is corrupted. Good thing I still had it in Notepad. For us, what I will do is I'm going to remove lines 11 and 13 again. I'm going to remove that part. So we will let's give this a try. Do remove both of those lines. And instead, I wanted to say something completely different. I wanted to say copyright. Twenty sixteen. The name of some company. Victor's Bakery. LLC. Whatever. All rights reserved. If I need more HTML, I can make it bold, different sizes, background color, all that stuff. That requires I know some code. At the minimum, this is something that's always requested when people take this WordPress class. I have this great theme, but I can't change this thing at the bottom or on the sidebar. Well, there will be a way in the code editor. You just have to find the piece of code and maybe read it and reverse engineer it a bit. And yes, this can be complicated. And I do have to say, if we are, if we, if we're editing our code, and uh, depending what we're editing, let's say I'm about to delete this stuff, and I go a little too far. Press delete, and then I start to add my copyright. I might not, not have noticed it, but I'll see it once I put the code back. I cut too much. I deleted one character of code. When you're dealing with code, one wrong character could break your site. Not one wrong code or command or line of code. One character of your code could break your whole site. So here, I deleted a little too much. I deleted one of these angle brackets, the, the less than symbol. Now it's correct. So again, this is this is pretty pretty advanced. This is like uh, let me ask you this: How many of you are comfortable opening the hood of your car and working in there? Not very many people. That's the same thing here. We pop the hood of our website. We're going to get in there and make our own changes to the engine. And if you don't know what you're doing with a car engine, your car won't run. And if you don't know what you're doing with code, your website won't run. But here we've changed the footer. We'll do one more thing. I wanted. I want the little copyright symbol. Copyright. The copyright symbol. 2016. The copyright symbol is this HTML code here. You type the ampersand, which is shift 7, a little and symbol, and then AMP semicolon. That's all together. The and symbol, AMP semicolon. It should become italicized. Again, you're, you don't see these, this, hint, this code hinting and, and color coding in the plain old WordPress editor. But you see it here in a in a more civilized code editor. And so that will be converted into a copyright symbol when we see it on the website. What we've been doing is from WordPress we copied everything, pasted it into Notepad. Now that I've made changes here, we need to select all of this and copy it. Whatever changes I make here in Notepad, I need to copy it again. Go back to WordPress, and this time all of this that's there, delete it, and paste your new version. 
of your code. So taking it from WordPress to work in Notepad, editing it in Notepad, and then taking it back to WordPress. Yes, it is cumbersome, but it it works. Maybe in the next version of WordPress they, they make this a little nicer. Remember to hit update file at the bottom and then visit site. Look on the footer. Copyright 2016 Bakery. I didn't write that properly. Oh, I, I know why. That's not. That's not what I thought I wrote. Amp, of course. Um, sorry, we should have written ampersand copy. That just created the ampersand symbol ampersand copy semicolon. That will create the copyright symbol. Sorry about that. There's lots of these symbols. And this one creates the copyright symbol. Now when I go back to the site, there we go, copyright symbol. We can look up a list of all of the possible codes. What if I need to use the trademark symbol? What if I need to use the, the yen symbol? What if I need to put an accent on an O? All of those are simply a code like we wrote there. They're called HTML character entity. I guess character codes Any of these places should have them like like here if I want to do <coughs> the one quarter if I want it to look nice one quarter I have here ampersand frac one four semicolon and it'll make the the one quarter symbol. If I wanted to do the inverted question mark, if I'm writing something in Spanish and I want the upside down question mark, I can write ampersand I quest semicolon and it's the inverted question mark. Here's the list of the different accented letters. So if I'm writing something with, with accent marks in, in, in Spanish and such, they're listed there. If I'm writing in, you know, Swedish or Norse languages, I suppose, German, there's the Enya, it's N tilde, Latin small letter N with tilde. You can find this in lots and lots of websites. Notice I did a search. HTML character codes. I went with the first result, but there's 10 million more we can look at. And they're all going to be universal. And if you keep poking around, this one's got HTML arrows. So I guess you can go over here. There'll be little symbols. This is a nicer looking site. I want to do the black letter capital I. right there. <clears throat> Some of these don't have an easy name like this, yen. Ampersand yen is obviously yen and ampersand euro is euro. But if you wanted to do rubles, there's no, or sorry, Indian rupee. Um, 
if you want it, there's a ruble. If you wanted to do the rupee, it, there isn't one with a name, but that's the same one right there, HTML code. If I put that, it would be the rupee sign. So that was a little touch of editing in code. Quick show of hands. How many of you have any experience with HTML? So very, very few people. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. That would be for like WordPress Part 3 class. But uh, you can take plenty of classes here at, South, at, at this college here where you can uh, learn much more coding uh, to get really good at it and such and more complex. But usually for most people, uh, getting a theme, either free or paid, will give you a great site. Once in a while, you can poke around in the editor to give you more detailed customization. But you'll usually be okay under the customize screen or the theme specific customizer. And our content travels through pretty easily. We needed to kind of, you know, massage it a little bit into place. And um, we have a brand new design. We'll take one more break, and then we'll we'll talk about that uh, concept of uh, migration and such. Any questions so far? All right, so we'll take a break, then we'll talk about uh, a couple of more things, and then uploading it to a real server.